Absolutely amazing. In exactly the past 12 months, we have had exactly 12 color e-readers released by different manufacturers. Seven manufacturers, actually. Now, aside from the fact that Fujitsu started Color E Ink back in 2009, and then some other companies like Ictaco and Pocketbook, they all jumped on the bandwagon. We're not going to talk about that. In fact, if you want to learn more about that, you can look at our History of Color E Ink video we did. It'll be in the description, and it'll be on the end roll of this video. But as for today, we're going to look at the last 12 months and the last 12 devices of Color E Ink. These aren't ranked or anything, we're just going to follow the chronology of it. So in release order, starting in 2020, this was when Color E Ink came back, and this is when Kaleido was introduced. In May of 2020, the iReader C6 got released. This is the first Color E Ink reader ever in the modern age. The iReader C6 was, it was kind of like a proof of concept because it only existed in mainland China, number one, and it was only distributed by us outside of mainland China, number two, and number three, it didn't look very good. It was very blue, which is a really big problem for the next six devices or so to come out with color, and it was locked into a Chinese ecosystem that you could not do anything about. You can't flash it, you can't sideload in APKs, you couldn't even change the language. It was very restricted and it didn't look that great because, well, this was the first release. Now, by comparison, it was, I mean, the cream of the crop because we had nothing to base it off of, but it didn't look that good. So moving on in the same month, we actually saw another company, Hisense. They're known for making cell phones, um, appliances, washers, dryers, all sorts of things, TVs. They released the Hisense A5C. This is a 5.84 inch e-ink color smartphone, an actual smartphone with a SIM card slot and everything like that. Now it was based on kind of old hardware because it didn't even have a speaker. The speaker and the earpiece shared the same package right by your ear. So it was kind of not that great of a device spec wise or build quality wise, which probably led them to cannibalizing their own device in the next month. Weeks later, they released the A5 Pro CC. Still Hisense, still under the same company and everything like that, except it was a more advanced unit. It had its own speaker, it had upgraded internals, a better screen, and it had a fingerprint unlock at the back. So that's kind of cool that they kind of advanced it like that, but the release date was so kind of tight that the A5C released just weeks before faded into the dust. Following that in July of 2020, this is where things get really interesting because Pocketbook came to the fight with a Color E-Ink 6-inch based off of their regular 6-inch platform that a lot of things share, the Touch Lux, the Pocketbook, Touch HD 3, etc. This was cool because it was right around the time they started putting the note-taking Scribble app on it. So really, this was the first time you could take notes on a Color E-Reader not an app on the Hisense devices, but this is really cool because Pocketbook is huge. They've been around for a long time, decade plus, and they dabbled in color a decade ago with the Pocketbook color. So they definitely had two cracks at it. So this is kind of the first generation of the new wave, but the second generation overall. Pocketbook never suffers from any sort of stock shortages or hindrances in distribution. So the thing was just readily available purchasable, you could buy it, you could use it, there was no issues, it was pretty successful. Moving on the next month in August of 2020, iFlyTech. Now in mainland China, iFlyTech has its hands in a lot of things, technology, software, a bunch of stuff. So they released the iFlyTech C1, this was a color device and it was the first flush screen and bezel color e-reader to be released. Now it did kind of look bad and actually you're adding even more things in front of your eyes and the viewable surface, so it didn't look that great. However, it was built 
well. And they followed it up with a Redback version, and it was advanced in the software side of things and the color screen side of things. Now, they said there were visual improvements, but they didn't really specify what was improved, so kind of just looked the same, but it was beautifully built. It had a speaker on the back. It was great to hold. However, again, it was locked into Chinese ecosystems, in which case you couldn't even browse the web. So that was a little bit of a downside. Now, November rolled around and this is where things got interesting. The year was coming to a close and Onyx released the Poke 2 color. Now, what they did was they did an initial Russian release of a couple units and it was sold out immediately as soon as the listing went up it basically said out of stock and these were russian released items with russian retail packaging and boxes and the language on there and it was only for that market it wasn't till a couple weeks later that everyone else got their allocated stock we ourselves here at goody reader got our 100 units allocated to us but that was it and they told us that there were no plans to continue the unit pretty much after it was released. So this posed a little bit of a problem. Would this just be a one-off? The year was coming to a close and nothing really that great came out out of all the devices thus far. And the Poke 2 was kind of just like a trial in select markets and after it was made and after it was sold out, that was it. But that was a good way to cap off the year and it rolled into 2021 where a lot of things changed. The introduction of Kaleido 2. Kaleido Plus, Kaleido 2.5, whatever you want to call it, it's the second gen of the color e-ink screen that we're looking at today. And in January, the first device of the year got released. However, it wasn't Kaleido 2, but it was 10.3 inches. And to this day, it is the only 10.3 inch note-taking Wacom color e-note. There are no other ones. This is the Big Me B1 Pro. It's a 10.3 inch using Kaleido 1 from we don't really know what unit because there were no devices using color in Kaleido 1 that were 10.3. This is the only one and it was released in the midst of the Kaleido 2 surgeons. So we don't know why they released it, but it did all right. It had the largest viewing surface and it had a lot of screen real estate. It was a little bit lacking in the overall resolution because it had about 100 PPI when it came to color. And again, it was Chinese only. It was locked into mainland China. Despite the fact that it was large screen, it came from an unknown company and it packed no punch. In February, of 2021 this is when the first Kaleido 2 latest gen screen technology device came out in the form of yes pocketbook the ink pad color by pocketbook 7.8 inch using the ink pad platform that the ink pad 3 pro had the 7.8 inch with the dual tone kind of side bezels it's a good looking device and it had that scribble app on there so you had the ability to take notes in a semi-large format which was kind of interesting but not that necessary because it was only capacitive it wasn't wacom there wasn't any dedicated stylus now this was the first time we saw a large screen past the six inch platform up until now we've had 5.84 on the phone six inches and the one-off big me at 10.3 but this is the first time we had a dedicated ebook reader that you can read mangas, graphic novels, PDFs, color content. And it was really, really good. And again, Pocketbook had no stock shortages. The thing was immediately released in a normal release method worldwide, and you could buy it, you could use it. Fantastic job, and we actually like this one, one of the best. In the same month, Hisense came out with the A7CC smartphone. 6.7 inch monster of a smartphone. The thing is absolutely massive. Now, with the A7CC, you had a lot of layers. And if actually you want to see a teardown of Color E Ink, you can check our channel. They released a really good product. And actually, this smartphone could turn people from an LCD LED smartphone to this because it was very, very real world usable. It had speed modes, it had audio, it had everything that a regular smartphone should and it was a fantastic release. In the next month, this is where everything changed. 
the Nova 3 color came out. And to this day, it's still the best color e-ink device of all time. That is both our opinion and just an objective fact. It has the highest specs. It's running the latest Android model. It has Google Play. It has a glow light. It has audio. It has Wacom. It has a touch screen. It has absolutely everything on it and it's not that expensive. It's around the $400 mark, a little bit less if you catch it on sale. And it's coming from a company with a 10 year track record and a track record of making every screen size imaginable. And unlike the Poke 2 color, this is a real non proof of concept actual unit that you could buy that's going to be supported. It's going to have warranty. You can have returns. It's the way to go if you want a color note taking device. It's actually the way to go if you want any color e ink device for that matter. That same month, March of 2021, Big Me took another stab at color. Three months after the release of their first unit, they finally got on board with the Kaleido 2 train. And they released the 7.8 Big Me S3 color. Completely blocked out of any sort of language options. You can't really integrate anything into anything else except mainland Chinese content, which for their usage, that's fantastic. And again, it was never really meant to be sold outside of mainland China. All the services, all the integration, the ecosystem, everything is in Chinese and it's catered to people that want to read novels and, you know, Chinese manga and editorials, everything from mainland China. Now, if you did want one, you can buy it from us and it does work. It is good quality. It's built very well and the stylus is actually completely unique. It runs off of Bluetooth as well. It has integration to do both. So in that regard, it's built well, but it's unusable outside of certain marketplaces. This brings us to May of 2021. This is the absolute latest release in exactly 12 months since Color E-Ink was introduced. This is the Goyue or Goyu Smartbook V5 Color, 7.8 inch Kaleido 2, standard Wacom pen, flush screen and bezel, color, audio, and it's in English, and you can sideload in your apps. This is a very real world usable device. It's based off of the Big Me S3 color platform with Onyx as a little bit of an inspired operating system and UI, all meshed into one using the same stylus as Onyx, released to the public. And this one actually is in English. You can change the language and you can buy it from us and use it in a real world scenario. So this marks the latest release of a device, although it, it's not really a known company, Guoyue, if I'm saying that correctly. However, it is available and it's another player in the game and it marks the 12th device released in 12 months. That's kind of cool how it's exactly 12 months from May to May, 12 devices were released. That's, that's just, it's amazing to see that Color E-Ink is coming out in droves like this, everything from large screen slate e-notes all the way down to smartphones with Color E-Ink screens. If you guys see anything else color out there, let us know. If we've missed anything, we almost missed the Guoyue Smartbook V5. We almost missed that. We just snuck that in. We saw that released. Thought we'd bring it to the masses. For GoodyReader.com and a 12-month look back of the last 12 devices released by Color E-Ink, this is Peter.